Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to be doing a calculator review of the new YES scientific calculator with tablet which you've seen in the thumbnail. So I'm going to go through this particular calculator. I've been asked to have a look and a detailed review of it. I'm going to show you all the really really nice features uh, with the calculator and all the things it can do. So this is a scientific calculator that's very clear to make here rather than the graphing calculator. So I will be comparing it with other scientific calculators out there and there's a lot of very very nice features. I'm going to go through five in particular that really make this calculator stand out compared to other calculators out there. So let's go over to my table, let's have a look at the calculator and show you all the exciting things it can do. Okay, so let's take a look at the calculator and you can see the calculator here right in front of you. Uh, just to make it nice and clear, it does come in a very nice box like so and then it just slides out and then you can grab the calculator. So it does come in a nice box. There's also the e-writer guide. I'm just going to leave that here as well, which is all in English and goes through a lot of the functions I'm going to be talking about today. So if we actually get started with the calculator, you can see it comes in this form here and also it can fold together quite nicely. So you can avoid a lot of scratches or things like that. And the first thing, of course, that we want to do here is just turn it on. So press the button here. And if you're used to Casio calculators or used to TI calculators, those scientific ones, then a lot of the functions are quite intuitive. So the first thing I want to do here is just show you the standard functions you'd expect from a scientific calculator. So we do say six times five, press equals, we get 30. So that works in the normal way. Uh, one thing to also check at the top, as I say to all scientific calculators, is whether it's in degrees or radians. Now that can be changed quite easily here by just pressing second function and here, and you can switch between them. So this now in degrees, so if I want to do say sine 30, I just go sine 30 equals and that gives me 0 0.5. So switching between degrees and radians is quite straightforward. Again, it's your second function and there to switch between them. Likewise, we want to find out a logarithm. So we can just do log of 100, for example, and press equals. That gives you equal to 2. So that function works in the normal way. And what you expect, if we want to work with indices, then we have that white power of x button that's quite common on many scientific calculators. So if we want to do, for example, nine squared, we go nine y squared equals, and that gives us 81. So if you're used to other calculators, a lot of the straightforward functions are very, very similar. Number two is a really nice thing that I put on this calculator, and you'll see the button here, it's called the DMS button. So that's really, really nice. So if we type in, for example, 2.214, and this is really useful when you do a speed distance time calculation. Uh, what this can do is take a decimal number, so 2.214 hours, for example, and change that into minutes and seconds. And all you need to do is literally just click on the button and it will change it to uh, 2 hours, 12 minutes and 50.4 seconds. So I thought this is a really nice um, feature they put onto this calculator and made it so intuitive for you as well. I know many of my students at IGCSE, they struggle with converting between units and this gives you a really, really nice way of doing that quickly. So I thought I should show you that. Again, you can just change that by pressing this button and working between them. So that's a really, really nice feature. Okay, the next feature I want to look at are complex numbers. So a nice feature of this calculator, which is a bit different to other calculators out there, is it can actually work out the uh, length of a complex number and also the argument of it, the so-called modulus and argument form of it. Now, in order to activate this, we need to go into complex mode. And this is something you'll see quite a lot on this calculator. If we go to mode, and then I'll go across to, in this case, complex, we're going to look at, so number three. It then puts the calculator into complex number mode, so it can work with a variety of different kind of complex numbers. One thing I found really, really useful here is, say we take the complex number three plus four i. Notice there's an i button here, which is a bit different to other calculators. And then it'll give you an answer, makes not much sense. But you'll see this button down here, so this is the modulus 
of the complex number and then we'll look at the argument in a moment if we press on this button here it will actually give you the modulus of the complex number and if you press second function and here it will also give you in degrees here the argument of that complex number and again we can combine that with what we've seen before so if I change the I'm just going to change to radians. All we can do now to do, we can do the same thing idea again. So four plus three i, and we can actually go second function, and here it will give you the argument also in radians too. So I thought that's a really nice feature on the calculator. I wanted to show you, and it's going to combine very nicely with something we're going to look at in in the very next point. Right, so the next thing I want to look at, let's take this out of uh, complex mode. I want to now look at trigonometry, and this brings in the feature that you've been waiting for, I'm sure, is the pad on the right-hand side. So the pad is a very, very useful feature on here. So we'll see at the bottom here, you can actually pull out the pen. So I'm going to quickly do that now. So there is a pen that comes with the calculator. And what we can do here is actually use this to make notes as we're going through what we're doing. So, for example, you can say, hi, like so. So you can write lots of very key notes on here. Um, for example, if you're doing a calculation here, you can go times 12. You can write that as a note. Then go 47 times 12. And you've got 564. And there is a button at the top here. If I press this button here, notice it will clear everything from the screen. But say you want to keep some notes. For, say, for example, you want to remember that sine theta is equal to O over H, and you want to keep that. You'll see there is a button at the top here. And if I put this now in lock mode, say if I try and press this to clear, it won't actually clear. So maybe there's some notes that you want to take before you start uh, doing an exercise, and you want to keep those notes, then you can actually lock this pad here. And if I take this out of lock mode now, and then click on this, then it will disappear. And one thing that I've been um, investigating as well, so this pen, one of the um, downsides to this, it could get lost easily. Yeah? So it just slides in here. So once you have finished using it, you just slide it back in here as well. Like so. And it's there. But yeah, I know students, they can lose things and maybe the pen disappears. One thing I've noticed is you can actually take an ordinary pen. So this is just a standard pen and you can actually make the notes as well. So I can just write in 47 times 12 again. Yeah. So even if you do lose that pen, you can still use any uh, pen that gives pressure, basically. And you can still write notes and we'll see if I can clear it as well. Now, one place where I think this is very, very useful for students particularly is working with trig equations. So say I want to work out uh, between a domain of 0 and 360 degrees. We'll work in degrees for this question. And we want to work out uh, sine x is equal to a half, for example. Well, again, we've worked on this IGCSE, so we want to, what's the opposite of signing, well, we want to inverse sign, and then this gives you, if you do this on the calculator, so sine inverse of 30, now make sure we are in the right mode in degrees, so 30, and we get a math error, so that's not good, so we go 30, so we want sine inverse of 0 0.5, and that gives you 30, but then we want to work out the other answers between 0 and 360. So what you can do is actually draw the sketch on the calculator. So if I just draw a quick sketch of sine between 1 and minus 1, worked out one of the answers at 0 0.5, so this is 30. And we want to work out the other answer over here. You can actually do the sketch whilst you've got your calculator there, which I think is a really useful tool to use if i just put in some of the key points here so this is 960 and you go ah well i want this other answer over here so if this is 180 i want the gap to be the same so this needs to be 150 so our other answer will be 150 degrees and if i want to check this on my calculator this is really nice you can switch between doing working and actually using the calculator all we need to now do here is just go sign 150 
And you go, ah, that's also 0 0.5, so that is also an answer. So I think one of the best features of using this pad from a maths teacher point of view and for students as well is actually using this for trigonometric equations where you need to do some graph sketching, but you also need to use the calculator at the same time. This would also lend itself quite nicely to anything that requires a sine rule and cosine rule because you can work through that you know, concurrently as well. So I think that's a really nice feature of the calculator. Okay, and the last thing I want to have a quick look at here is also looking at the statistics function of the calculator. So you remember this mode that I went to for complex numbers, you also see there is an option here for stat as well. So we go to one, and then we can go to stat x. And um, there's a lot of functions this calculator can do uh, to actually work out uh, using data. So the way that this works here is if I type in say 52, press data that will add 52 to a list and I say we add 56 and then 58 and 59 say 61 and 63 and 68 for example so I've added seven pieces of data here that's why it comes up n is equal to seven and if you need to look at anything that we've added in you can just use the arrow keys here so if you want to look at, okay, I've got 68. You can also change the frequencies as well. If you want to do a frequency table instead, I'm taking this for a sort of straightforward piece of data and it will label each X1, X2 and so on. And from there, you can actually do a lot of the different statistics functions. You'd be expected to do at IGCSE, also at A-level as well. So for example, if I want to work out the mean, all I need to do is go to alpha here and then click on the X bar button. You'll see that in red here and press equals. It will then work out the mean for me, which is 59.57. So it's quite an intuitive way of actually working with this, which is different to many calculators out there. Um, if we want to work out standard deviation, we should go to alpha and SX equals and it will work out the standard deviation for us. If we want to work out the variance, which is just this squared essentially, then all we need to do is go alpha and 9. That gives us the variance there as well. And if you, particularly on the A-level uh, courses, you need to work out the sum of all the X's, for example. Then you'll see that button down here by number 1. So you go alpha 1 uh, equals, and then it will just generate it for you. So I think the statistics function is a little bit different to other calculators out there. And I find it quite intuitive. It's quite a nice way of working with it. Um, it's very very useful it's very handy and again you can write notes here using the pen like so to actually go through a lot of the key features okay and my final thought so this calculator is priced at 26 euros 50 if you are interested in the calculator then do look in the description below for a link to there as well and also a price reduction if you click on the link um I would say this is a well-priced calculator for what it does, particularly with the extra features of the complex numbers in particular. So if you're an AS further math student uh, or A level further math student, this is something to, definitely to consider. And also the writing tablet, I've shown you where we can actually use that in our maths lessons. And I think it's a really useful addition and something a little bit different to uh, calculators that are currently out on the market. So definitely something to worth explore, particularly if you're looking at doing AS maths or A-level maths, this is certainly a good calculator to consider and also with the IGCSE courses too. So I think it's well priced, I think it's well put together and there's a lot of extra features that some of the calculators currently out there don't have as well.